I hope on the next development box, which is going to be AMD Threadripper based, my hope is that uh, what you see here will be running it closer to 50 millisecond to 30 sec millisecond frames. I estimate these frames are about 100 milliseconds or maybe up to 150 milliseconds, but um, they'll be at least twice as fast on Threadripper and maybe more. As you see, the quality is actually acceptable here. The frame rate's not. And this foveated detail, if you look in the center of the image, the detail is acceptable. And I can trade off detail for frame rate thus. slowing down the frame rate and increasing the center detail. You see it beating. It's thrashing there with the feedback. As it's trying to maintain the frame time. like having a thermostat that's chasing the right temperature up and down. But you can see, if I could get a 30 millisecond frame time, say with that, it would be fine. I believe I have the stream set to 10 frames a second anyway, so. That's done deliberately because I want. That's done deliberately. Now, this is the year that this tracer, ah, there, I can hear my CPU water cooler fan go on. I'm going to let the CPU rest. And I will turn down the foveated detail somewhat, just so my overclocking doesn't stress. Now, see the threads of red off to the, the right of the fovea here, coming off the mirror? Utterly incomprehensibly unattainable through any imaginable, well, I mean, you can get screen splash reflections from a GPU shader, I suppose. But these reflections, of course, work even when the source color is off screen, as you see. because it's not screenplay space reflection. It's a world space reflection. So it's easy to have mirrors reflecting mirrors, mirror tunnels and such. Now, Funny things happen with the textures when we make holes in them. 
And that's actually for a complicated reason, but a good reason. You, one doesn't want the, when one makes holes in a textured object, one doesn't want the texture to look as if it is just on the surface. One wants the texture to look as if it runs through the object in some solid way, and then one has to decide what that means. And it can mean different things, but they're all complicated. And of course, when you make holes and you fly inside an object that has mirrors, you get into sort of a hall of mirrors effect. That's why things look weird inside here. We're not seeing behind polygons. There are no polygons here. That's just mirrors. So you can see that on Threadripper, this will definitely be a render that one can make some kind of playable game with. One can make, obviously, puzzle. One could make a puzzle game. One could make a battle royale game. One could make a virtual world, toy world, uh, like Second Life, which is the original idea behind this, and which in fact is what we're going to do. And this is the year after something like 15 years of development when somebody is going to help me because obviously I can't do a virtual world with many people interacting. I can't develop it with only me. That's not possible. And there's no way for me to exhaust the design space I've opened up by myself. But I've been greenlit to go ahead. So I'm sure everything will work out. Like I said, I don't think any faster than 100 millisecond frames will benefit us on the stream at all because I believe I have the streaming set to 10 frames a second anyway. Of course, you want at least 30 frames a second for live work. Now, what you're seeing here has the benefit of the GPU in one sense and one sense only. The entire frame goes out and goes through a GPU shader, a, G a GS GLSL shader. And the one we're using here is a tune shader. We can change it.
Obviously, I didn't write the code that does that. I didn't make the hardware. Didn't write the operating system. There are a lot of things I didn't write. But this, this is really the best GLSL shader. The Tune Renderer, it works the nicest. And um, we're actually able to modify that Tune Shader in real, and reload it while the program is still running. We can rewrite it if we want, change a couple of the parameters. Oh, yes. So, there's a whole lot I should be doing. I could work on this more than full time and still not do everything I should be doing. And as it is, I'm not able to work on it full time. <laughs> My situation is complicated. But those I work for picked me and they gave me a great gift. They gave me this to work on. I got to work on it for 15 years, and I wondered why nobody would help me, and nobody was interested when I said, look, in 10 years' time, this will be so important. This will be better than a rasterizer. This will be the thing. And nobody would pay attention to me. Nobody would listen to me. Nobody would help me, and I thought, this is terrible. This is a curse. But it was a gift because I got to work on it and nobody got to step on me. It's like skiing down a slope in fresh powder and nobody else gets to ski it. I got to discover so many things. And why? Because I'm uniquely gifted? Because I'm uniquely talented? No. Because everyone else's ability, to, uh, ability inclination to work on it, thought to work on it, was suppressed. Everyone else was prevented from working on it so that I could work on it. How? I have no idea how. It is beyond me. But it was done so that I could work on it. So that it could be produced now like a rabbit out of a hat. in the interest of those people 
I say people, in the interest of those who arrange for it to happen. In the interest of those I serve. And I'm going to do my best. They picked me. I was picked. I'm lucky. I'm grateful. But you know, it's you, the audience, that makes it all possible. Did that give you tingles? I hope it did. If you enjoyed, if you enjoyed this stream, like below, subscribe, leave a comment, you know, leave a tip. Um, I'll be streaming every day. Um, you know, thanks for being with me on my YouTube journey. Um, I've got to go now. See you on the internets.